Well, hello and welcome back to the channel. Um, no time for any fancy B-roll or kind of intro to this video. I'm out with Steve, we've come to Wales. Um, um, we're on the road that leads sort of from Lake Bala uh, down towards the Rinox, down towards the, uh, the, the old nuclear power station. And on the drive here, the light was looking completely, completely flat. But just as we pulled up to this car park here, we're walking down to this um, this viaduct whose name I can't remember, so I'll put it on the screen now, uh, the light just started kicking off. So as you can probably see just behind me now, uh, you've got uh, this road going down towards the Rinox. And then also uh, just on the right hand side, you've got this hill here, we've got a bit of light on it, light on it as well. So we're gonna sit this out for about 10 or 15 minutes and just see what happens with the light, but it's looking absolutely beautiful. I first found this scene about three or four weeks ago when I was supposed to come wild camping with the, with the wife and I saw the most amazing sunset I think I've ever seen. Um, the sky literally looked like it was on fire and the mountain tops looked, almost looked like volcanoes. Um, unfortunately at the time I wasn't able to pull over and take a photo but I'm definitely coming back here in the sunset and hopefully get a, a similar scenario to that when I return in the future. But for this morning, this is quite a nice scene. Um, like I say, just gonna sit it out for a bit, see what happens to the light and try and grab, th grab this shot. So, Whatever works out in terms of photography wise, um, I'll pop it on the screen at the moment. But yeah, I mean, it's quite a simple scene. I've got uh, two sets of trees, uh, one on the left hand side, one on the right hand side, kind of balancing, balancing each other out. Uh, and the road kind of hmm, pretty much almost towards the right hand third, leading through to the Rinox in the background. Really simple scene, but really quite effective. I don't think the light is quite doing what we want it to do, to be honest with you, but still. I'll put the shot on the screen. Um, it is bitterly cold. I wasn't expecting it to be this cold. Uh, completely wrapped up in my gloves and, and my jacket. Um, stupidly forgot my hat. But uh, yeah, as I say, I'll put this shot on the screen. I'm not expecting great things with the light, unfortunately. But as I say, definitely one I'm going to return to in the future. Okay, so we've arrived at the viaduct, this viaduct, and uh, yeah, I don't know if it's going to work. I've got a few issues with it. First being, and you can probably just make this out on the camera, is just above the viaduct here, you've got this, uh, this area of deforestation, uh, deforestation, <laughs> where, I don't know, it would look better if the trees were there, uh, if I'm honest with you. Um, and also there's a grassy patch down here, which, um, try as I might to get back and forward a bit, I just can't get that out of the frame. Uh, so I'm thinking I might opt for something like a 16 by nine crop with this, possibly, or get creative with clone stamp. Um, but what I do like, there's a couple of things I do like. Just to the edge of the, the viaducts, there's this like patch uh, with a fence running up it. It's got these lovely sort of golden bracken, I think it's possibly bracken. Um, so that's adding a, a splash of color and a splash, a splash of contrast to the scene. And I do like the, the contrast of the viaduct itself with the arches and just the, um, the wall of the viaduct as well. So you've got a bit of contrast there as well. But um, yeah, not the best image in the world, but I'm going to take it anyway and I'll put it on the screen. Just speaking to Steve as well, we might just head a little bit further down the hill and look not directly at the viaduct, but sort of almost slightly side onto it. See if we can get a different perspective there that's maybe got a bit more of a, a pleasing composition. So I'll put this one on screen anyway. I move it down the other part of the hill. So I walked down a bit further towards the viaduct and I'm just not feeling it, to be honest with you. Right on this, uh, this bank here where it just looked like recently the ground has kind of 
fell into the river. Um, but that's not my issue. My issue is just finding a composition that's just not really working. Uh, Steve's gone a bit closer towards the viaduct. He's trying to shoot an image there, but there's a few significant issues with this image, potentially. You've got power lines, literally you have to see just straight through the arches there. Um, and just find a, a nice clean composition just isn't, for me, going to work. Um, yeah, I think I've hit a bit of a dud on this one for me. Um, so just to explain a little bit about why we've actually come to Wales today. So, well, we just wanted a day out really, but um, we haven't really came here with any kind of significant plan or anything like that. It was just a case of, right, we're going to Wales. Um, here's some ideas of places we can go to and we'll just go and sort of play it by ear really so um that's quite that's quite cool i enjoy those sort of days where you're just out and you've got no real plan or idea of what you want to do but um i think we're going to finish up here soon um head back to the van and see where we go next one of the areas we've talked about is fairy glen so i might go and check that out and then anywhere in between really so <laughs> come along and let's see uh let's see where we stop let's see what we find Right, so I'm in the same place I was talking to you a moment ago and I turned around and saw a scene uh, where I'm using the telephoto lens. I'm at about 250 mil and you probably won't work it out on this camera here, but right over in the distance over there, um, there is some waterfalls kind of cascading up towards the top of these mountains here. I can't tell you what mountains they're called. I'll have a look in the, on the OS maps and I'll put them on the screen now. But yeah, we just, I was just waiting for some pockets of light to come through just across the land because it's quite a shapely piece of land. Um, there's little dips and rolls in the hills um, which were just catching the light beautifully. So I'm quite pleased with this shot to be honest with you. I've uh, just been really very careful with the, uh, the, the geared head here just to really fine tune the composition and get it exactly how I wanted it. Um, making sure I'm leaving out bits that I don't want in the scene. And what's also really adding to the scene as well is there's lots of little sheep dotted around over the hills as well. So they're just adding a little extra element to the, to the scene, I think. Um, quite happy with this. So I'll pop it on the screen now. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, but the light is just constantly changing. It's gone really, really quite cloudy. In fact, I suspect it might actually rain in a moment's time. Um, but I'm going to keep the telephoto lens on here because I've just seen another scene over here, which I think may also work. Um, but yeah, what a fantastic morning. There's also this river here, which have been which I owed up as using sort of like a leading line uh, through to the mountains in the background. It didn't really work for me, but Steve's got a shot that I think he's quite happy with. So um, I might try that one again. <laughs> but uh, yeah, as I say, I'm gonna try and get another shot over here now and I'll talk you through it. All right, so I turned 90 degrees, uh, but the telephoto one still was at 180 mil, uh, shooting towards these mountains in the background. Um, again, I don't know what they're called. I'll, we'll find out and I'll put them on the screen now. Um, but yeah, 180 mil, and I've just been waiting for the light to change. And I've just been banging off shots for about the past half an hour as, as the lights change. So what I'm probably gonna end up doing is taking three or four of them with the light is, where the light is just where I want it to be on the land. Uh, and with the right set of clouds that are over the mountains there and basically merge them all together in a bit of a composite. Um, should be quite a nice image. So if it works out any good, I'll pop it on the screen, but I think we're done for this particular area now. Gonna make our way, I think, back up towards the van, but uh, what a fantastic location. This valley is absolutely beautiful. And in the right conditions and the right light, yeah, it's, it's really, really good. Um, and not your typical Snowdonia landscape sort of photography location. So definitely one to check out. I've just started walking back to the van with Steve and realised I've been a bit of a colossal idiot, to be honest with you. Um, this path that I'm on now actually goes straight across the viaduct. So I actually think we would have been better going across the viaduct this morning, actually looking back on the viaduct and basically with this forest in the background, which would have looked a lot more picturesque. 
Um, yeah, chalk that one up to uh, not knowing the area very well. So I think I will end up coming back here, but I think the next time I come here in the right conditions, that's exactly what we'll do. So we've come to uh, Fairy Glen. Word of warning for anyone who is slightly unstable on their feet and possibly overweight, like me. Um, very slippy, so be bloody careful if you come here. Um, <laughs> I've nearly fell over about three or four times. Um, so yeah, come to Fairy Glen. Because of the weather and because of how slippy it is, I've just gone for the classic shots. Um, went for one portrait and one landscape. Uh, shooting a telephoto uh, focal length of about 70 to 80 mil. Uh, so yeah, they're okay, nothing particularly special. We have had a bit of rain, um, just which I think has actually added to the scene slightly, just added a bit of mist to the air. Um, so yeah, I'm quite happy with these, I think. But uh, again, nothing special, nothing that hasn't been done before, but I don't care, I'm having a good time in a beautiful location. I'll put them on the screen now. While I like the simplicity of the portrait image, I feel this image is so much stronger. I recorded another piece to camera explaining how I took this image, but unfortunately, like an idiot, I forgot to hit the record button. Uh, my excuse this time is that I was trying not to die on slippy rocks. Using the rock on the bottom right hand third, I noticed foam meandering through the scene. I began experimenting with different shutter speeds before finally settling for 12 seconds. Using my free stop ND and polarizer, to take some of the sheen off the surface of the water. I just love that sweeping curve of the water through the scene. All right, we're back at the van. My glasses are steaming up. Um, but uh, I think we earned those photos. Uh, I'm actually quite happy in the end how they, I think they've turned out. So uh, let me know what you think. But uh, yeah, when I first got down there, I was quite negative to be honest with you. It's just, it felt like the light was really, really flat and I just wasn't really feeling it. I think probably because I was a bit shattered from clambering over really slippy rocks, but um, yeah, I'm glad we stuck it out, because uh, as I say, I think those photos are going to turn out to be really nice. So, yeah, not entirely sure what we're doing yet. Um, just going to chill out here for five minutes, and then I'll give you an update when we decide what we're doing. All right, so we've just come for a bit of a drive. Just done a, basically a full circle, really. So starting off, obviously, as I say earlier, we'll put that viaduct. Again, the name I can't remember. Um, and then driving around through the lanes to Fairy Glen. And now we've just basically come back to pretty much where we started this morning, uh, looking out towards Molshabod there. And the reason we stopped here is because when we were driving past, there was a lovely bit of light on the side of Molshabod. Um, it's gone at the moment. I've got a bit of a time lapse going on here, uh, just capturing the clouds moving through. Um, so yeah, really just uh, come here just to have a cup of coffee, see what happens with this light. Hopefully it changes a bit, but it's a lovely cottage right at the base of Molshabod. I don't know if you can see it on the camera there. Um, so we're hoping that, yeah, if we get a bit of light on that, it could be quite a nice photo. Kind of reminiscent of uh, Bocolatif Moor, um, was the thinking anyway. <laughs> and then just in the background there in the clouds, I think that might be Snowdon. Um, so yeah, drinking the coffee, seeing what happens to the weather. Anything changes, I'll give you an update. Okay, so we've just come to the other side of the road here, um, shooting towards Molshabod and, and basically some of the mountains on the left-hand side here. We've been waiting for some light to come through and you can just see it coming through now uh, across these ridges over here and just a little bit on Molshabod there. So 
basically shooting for the light, um, trying to get a couple of compositions. Trying to get one composition down there with, uh, with the, the cottage in the mulcher board. And just a bit of light coming towards the top of it there now. And then just to the left here, this light here I'm shooting at the moment, is this kind of um, forest bit here with this kind of zigzag of a path sort of thing going through, to, through the image uh, into the background there. It's a beautiful shot. Uh, so yeah, playing around with a few different compositions. Um, the light's changing that fast, so I haven't really got time to go through all of the compositions with you. So I'm just going to try and get all these shots now and I'll pop them on the screen. Light on Shabbat, light on Shabbat. The light's just coming through and actually just about to kiss that sort of S curve bit going up through the woods there. So I'm just going to wait a few seconds and hopefully get that light there and it should make a really nice image. Uh, and then I'm going to try and concentrate on Mal Shabbat with, well, if the light appears, that is. Uh, so it really is a case of just shoot, shoot, shoot and just see what you can get really because it's changing that quickly. Just to explain as well, sorry, if there's quite a lot of road noise here, it's because I'm literally a foot away from the road. It's changing so quickly. All right, I'm going back to Shabod now because you can see the light coming on, on the mountain over there. So I'm going to go for a portrait with this one, get the house at the bottom there. Beautiful light, absolutely stunning. Uh, I think I've got that one in the bag. Just triple check, it's actually sharp. Absolutely pin sharp. We are like pits in a candy shop. Yeah, I think that's going to make a really nice image with a bit of editing. A bit more light coming on the ridge over there now. It's constantly changing every second. Oh, on the, on the house, touching on the house. Oh. Okay, so the light has now just come onto the house. So I need to really quickly reframe this one. Absolutely bloody beautiful. Right, quickly, quickly, quickly. And this is where knowing your camera inside out really comes in handy. Having said that, I think I just missed it. Still waiting for that light to come on the house. There's a big pocket of light down there, but I'd love it on the house. I'm going to bag this anyway because it might be the best I get. But if it just gets on that house, I'll be a very, very happy photographer. I'm just to explain what I'm doing. I'm basically taking lots of different photos of, as the light moves across the mountain. Um, and like what I said earlier with uh, the photo, well, what I took this morning, um, <laughs> just going to take the ones that I really, really like and where the light's sitting where I want it to and may do a bit of a composite and try and actually bring those pieces together just to get the actual image that I want. So it's just a matter of patience really, just seeing how this light changes. Did I mention it was bloody freezing? Yes, I've got the light on the cottage, just what I wanted. Perfect. This should make a really nice photo. I'll pop it on the screen now. Okay, switch compositions now. I've moved to the left slightly, and I believe we've got one of the ridges of Snowdon there, and it looks really ragged and really kind of um, sharp and really quite alpine looking almost. And there's a ridge in front of it, and I, earlier on there was a touch of light just on that, and it looked absolutely beautiful. By the time I framed the shot, the light had completely disappeared. So the light is still changing quite rapidly, so I'm just waiting for that bit of light on that ridge, and I think this will make a really nice image. Um, if I capture it, I'll put it on the screen. If not, you'll never see it. All 
Right, so that light's pretty much fizzled out now, to be honest with you. Um, I think we're pretty much done for the day. So oh, it's been a bit of a wild one, really, just all over the place, but I absolutely loved it. I just love these days sometimes where you don't come out with any real kind of plan as such. You know, um, you've got an idea in mind of where roughly you want to go, but you kind of just follow your instincts and follow the light. And I've absolutely loved it. Might not come away with any great images, but I don't care. I just had a great day out with a great friend. What more can you want? So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed watching this just as much as I've enjoyed being out today. Um, if you have, please uh, give us a like and subscribe. And if you have any comments, please leave them down below. I love reading and responding to them. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon.